Welcome back to our today's lesson and um, we are going to use the method of sections to determine the forces in the members uh, GC, member BC, CD as well as uh, FE <coughs> on the truss we are given here which is loaded by um, an external load of 1.5 kN at uh, joint B joint G is loaded with an external load of 2.5 kN Joint F 1.5 kilonewtons and uh, please guys if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so now um, We are going to begin with uh, determining the length of uh, some of the members and the first member we are going to begin Determining its uh, size is member AB and for us to get the length of member AB we are going to consider this triangle ABG, which is a right angled triangle. Since we have an angle of 90 degrees at joint B. And therefore, this will uh, happen to be the uh, this will happen to be the hypotenuse, and this is going to be the adjacent. And you know that the relation between or the ratio of adjacent to the hypotenuse, that's usually the cosine of that angle. And therefore, we are going to have the length of member AB being equal to the hypotenuse, which is 2 meters, multiplied by the cosine of angle 30 degrees, that is angle BAG. And that length is going to be 1.732 meters. Therefore, that is the length of uh, member AB, 1.732 meters. Good. The next member we are going to determine uh, its length is member or is the point of action of the 1.5 kN load from joint A. And in this case, if we call this point H, that point H, we are going to determine the length of uh, member AH. And in the same case, the triangle ABH uh, is also uh, a right angle triangle having AH as the adjacent now, and AB will now act as the hypotenuse. And in this case, member AH will be given by the hypotenuse, which is 1.732 meters, multiplied by the cosine of angle 30 degrees. And that's going to give us uh, 1.5 meters. 1.5 meters. And therefore, A to H is 1.5 meters, meaning that H to G is 0 0.5 meters since a to g is 2 meters then we need the length of member bh we need the length of the member bh and in that case uh, we have the uh, we can use this as the adjust uh, the adjacent this is the adjacent that is 1.5 uh, meters of triangle ABH. This is the hypotenuse and this is the opposite. And therefore, uh, the length of member B to H is going to be hypotenuse, which is 1.732 multiplied by the sine of angle 30 degrees. Remember, uh, Sign is given by the ratio of opposite to the hypotenuse. This is uh, the hypotenuse, this is the opposite, and multiply by sign that. And that's going to give us uh, 0 0.866 meters. 0 0.866 meters. And the next member, we need to know its uh, length is member B. G member BG and for us to get the length of member BG we can use this triangle ABG it is an, a right angle triangle and we can use uh, 
the Pythagoras theorem. So we are going to say this. We know that Pythagoras theorem states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We need the value of the base because this is the base of this uh, triangle that is its height and that is its hypotenuse or c. So in this case, we need the value of uh, b and, uh, or a, we need the value of a and therefore a is going to be given by the square root of c squared and c is this hypotenuse which is 2 meters therefore 2 squared minus the height which is 1.732 meters squared so that is it and this is going to give us a when you find the square root of this it is going to give us one meter, one meter, and therefore the length of member BG is one meter. So, since triangle ABG is equal to triangle DEF, therefore it means that the sizes of the members of this triangle are also equal to the sizes of the members of this triangle. And therefore, it means that uh, member DE is 1.732 meters. Uh, member DF is uh, 1 meter. Member D, we can call this uh, point J, we can call it J, is uh, that is a BH 0 0.866866 meters. Just like this member here, 0 0.866 meters. And F to J, that is uh, 0 0.5 meters. J to E, 1.5 meters. After getting the length of the various members that we need, the next thing we are going to calculate will be reactions calculations. Reactions, calculations, reactions, calculations. And we are going to take moments about and A. Therefore, taking moments, taking moments about the end A, we are going to have the following. Therefore, we get, uh, taking moments about A, we get what? Therefore, we are going to have uh, this anticlockwise moment, uh, reaction at E, multiplied by the distance from E to A, which is 6 meters. Therefore, R E multiplied by 6, being equal to 1.5 kilonewtons times a distance or a span of 1.5 meters. At G, we have a load of 2.5 kilonewtons. The distance from G to A is 2 meters. And therefore, the moment there is going to be 2.5 multiplied by 2. Finally, at F, we have a load of 1.5 kilonewtons. Distance from F to A being 4 meters. Therefore, that is going to be 1.5 kilonewtons multiplied by 4 meters. So, this is going to be reaction at E times 6 being equal to 1.5 times uh, 1.5 that is 2.25. Therefore, 2.25 plus uh, 5 plus 1.5 uh, times 4 that happens to be 6. Uh, reaction at E multiplied by 6 will be equal to, so that is uh, 11, so we are going to have 13.25 13 uh, 13 kilo newtons. So we have 13.25. To get the reaction at E, we are going to divide both sides by 6. 
and in this case the reaction at E is going to be equal to 2.208 kilo newtons good after we are done with the calculating the reactions at E the next thing we are going to do is uh, to analyze uh, the forces by drawing uh, a section line 1 1 and considering the light portion of uh, that is uh, of uh, this uh, truss that is under equilibrium so in this case this is what we have and um, on the right section of this truss we have section 2 2 which are drawn there we have joint B, joint C is there. Joint B, C, we have force C, B, which is, um, we have a force uh, C, B there. We have a force C, G on member C, G. And that is one of the forces we are required to determine. Force C, B also, it is B, C in this case. And C, uh, force C, B and B, C are the same member. We have force DC, that is CD, and here we have force EF or force FE, another one. So we have all the forces uh, that we are required to determine. And in this case, we are going to apply the condition of the equilibrium for the portion under consideration. This is the portion under consider uh, consideration. Uh, and we are going to begin with the section 1 1. And we are going to begin by taking moments about F. And when you take uh, moments about F, when you take moments about F, we are going to get the value of this uh, force FDC. When we want to get the value of the force EF, we are going to take moments about D. We are going to take moments about D. This is the principle we are going to apply, that summation of all the moments taken about point F will be equal to zero. Now, remember, the sum of clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. Now, to satisfy this uh, principle, we are going to bring the sum of anti-clockwise moments on this side and therefore we are going to have the sum of clockwise moments minus the sum of anti-clockwise moments will be zero and that means that all the clockwise moments will be positive in this case uh, applying this principle and the anti-clockwise moments will be a uh, negative so this is uh, how we are going to do it now taking moments about um, F, so we have taking moments, taking moments about F, taking moments about F, we are going to have the following, FDC multiplied by the distance from D to F which is one meter so we are going to have negative f dc multiplied by one meaning that this is an anti-clockwise moment and we have uh, said that when you bring anti-clockwise moments this side they are going to be negative therefore minus f dc times one minus 2.208 times the distance from e to f which in this case is 2 meters therefore minus 2.208 times 2 is equal to 0 therefore this is going to be negative f dc minus 2.208 uh, times 2 that happens to be 4.416 so minus 4.416 is equal to zero and therefore minus f d c is going to be taking 4.416 this side of the equal sign therefore you are going to have 4.416 and this negative 
will be adopted by 4.416 and therefore FDC is going to be negative 4.416 kilo newtons. Now that force uh, being negative it is going to be a compressive force meaning that it is compressing a uh, it is compressing joint joint D and therefore F D C is equal to 4.416 kilo newtons and in this case that is a compressive force compressive force good so that means that uh, FDC is compressing joint D it is compressing joint D now after we are done with taking moments about uh, F the next thing will be taking moments about D therefore taking moments taking moments about D we get we get what so taking moments uh, about D so this is going to be given uh, or we are going to have F F E times the distance from J to D since we are taking moments about D so F E F that is a, a it is a clockwise moment times 0 0.866 since the distance from J to D is 0 0.866 minus 2.205 times the distance from E all the way to J which is D so 2.205 208 times 1.5 that's going to be equal to 0 therefore this is going to be f e f times 0 0.866 minus 2.208 times 1.5 that is 3.312 3.312 is equal 0 uh, we are going to have F E F times 0 0.866 being equal to 3.312 and to get F E F we are going to divide both sides by 0 0.866 divide this side by 0 0.866 and when you divide, uh, you divide uh, 3.312 divided by 0 0.866 that's going to be 3.824 kilonewtons and therefore the force on member EF is going to be um, 3.824 3.824 kilonewtons now that force uh, being positive is going to be a tensile force remember Tensile forces are usually positive and on the other hand, compressive forces are usually negative forces. So, those are the forces FEF and FDC. After that, we are going to take moments about G. So, when we take uh, moments about G, we are going to get the value of the force CB. After taking moments about G, G is somewhere there. Uh, therefore, we go to taking moments, taking moments about G, taking moments about G, we get, uh -huh. what do we get when we take moments about G? about G. we first of all need to get the perpendicular height of this isosceles triangle AGF and in this case this triangle have got uh, angles of uh, 60 degrees that is angle CGF is 60 degrees as well as angle 
CFG. They are 60 degrees angles. There is a light angle. Uh, light angle. Um, uh, when we consider triangle CGK, we have the adjacent, which in this case is 1 meter, and we have the opposite. So we are going to use the relationship of tangent. Therefore, the tangent of angle 60 will be given by the opposite, and in this case the opposite is uh, the distance CK divided by the adjacent, which is uh, 1 meter. Therefore, CK will be given by 1 multiplied by tan 60. And that's going to give us 1.732 meters. Uh, now, taking moments about uh, G, this is uh, G, and we are taking moments about uh, G for us to get the value of the force FCB. And in this case, we are going to have uh, negative FCB multiplied by the distance from B to G, which is 1 meter, so times 1, plus 1.5 kilonewtons times the distance from F to G, which in this case uh, is 2 meters. Uh, so we have 1.5 times 2. That is a clockwise moment. Remember I said that the negative uh, moments will be anti-clockwise moments, positive moments will be clockwise moments. Uh, minus, we have a reaction at E, so uh, which is uh, 2.208. We multiply by the distance from E to G, which is 4 meters. And then we equate that to zero. Since the summation of uh, all the moments, summation of all the moments taken about G are equal to zero. Good. So this is going to be negative FCB plus 1.2 times, uh, 1.5 times 2, that is uh, 3, minus 2.208 multiplied uh, by 4. That happens to be 8.832. So 8.8332. Uh, this is going to be negative FCB 3 minus um, 8.832. That's going to be negative 5.832 being equal to 0. That one is also equal to 0. Bringing this one, this side of the equal sign, that's going to be negative FCB is equal to 5.832 kilo newtons. This negative will be adopted by this uh, force there. Therefore, FCB is going to be equal to negative 5.832 kilo newtons. This force being negative, it is, our it means that that force is a compressive force. And therefore, um, the force on member C, B, is a compressive force. So, we write there, compressive force, compressive force. Very good. So, that is the value of the force, F, C. B. Good. Finally, after taking the moments about uh, about G, we are going to take moments about A. Therefore, taking moments, taking moments about joint A or about end A, what do we get? And remember. We are using this principle that summation of all the moments taken, taken about A will be equal to zero. And therefore, in this case, when we take moments about A, we are going to have uh, this CG. It is a slanting uh, force. And therefore, when we convert it to a horizontal force, we are going to have this negative FCG cos 
theta and cos theta is 60 degrees that angle is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees multiplied by the distance from C all the way to A which in this case is 1.732 so that is multiplied by uh, 1.732 this is an anticlockwise moment, and that is why it is a negative moment. Plus, FCG multiplied by the sine of angle 60, that is the sine, uh, that is the angle at which the force is inclined at. And then we multiply that by the distance from K to A, which in this case is 4 meters. I mean uh, 3 meters. This is uh, 1 meter plus 2. So that is 3 meters. So we multiply by 3. So that means that this is a clockwise moment. Then we, we add this clockwise moment. At F we have a load of 1.5 kilo newtons. And therefore the distance from uh, uh, F to A is uh, 4 meters. Therefore we are going to have 1.5 kilonewtons multiplied by the distance from F to A which is uh, which is 4 meters and finally we have a reaction at E which is an anticlockwise moment and therefore it's going to be negative 2.208 times the distance from E to A which in this case is 6 meters. Now, uh, this is going to be negative FCG times cos 60 is 0 0.5, therefore 0 0.5 times 1.732 plus FCG, now a vertical force, vertical force that is converting the slanting FCG which is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees to vertical then it will act at this point then the distance from K to A uh, multiplied by size 60 which is uh, 0 0.866 times 3 that is the distance from K to A 3 meters plus 1.5 uh, times 4 that is uh, 6 minus 2.208 times 6, that happens to be 13.248. 13.248 is equal to 0. This one is also equated to 0. Um, this is going to lead us to minus FCG times 0 0.5 times uh, 1.732 that happens to be 0 0.866 therefore times 0 0.866 plus 0 0.866 times 3 that happens to be 2.598 therefore we have FCG times 2.598 2.598 8 plus 6 minus 13.248 is equal to 0. So here we have uh, 0 0.866 that is minus 0 0.866 FG FCG so minus 0 0.866 FCG plus 2.598 FCG FCG 6 minus 13.248 that happens to be 7.248 therefore minus 7.248 is equal to 0 good uh, I'll continue that uh, calculation here and we are going to have minus 0 0.866 plus 2.598 that's going to be 1.732 therefore 
1.732 FCG. Then this is minus 7.248. We take it this side of the equal sign. It's going to be 7.248. 7.248. Now to get the value of FCG, we are going to divide both sides by 1.732. Divide this side again by 1.732. And therefore, FCG, the force on member CG, when you divide this, we are going to have 4.185. So, we have 4.185 kilo newtons. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that is the value of the force on the member CG. 4.185 kilo newtons. Now, um, we can tabulate uh, those forces now. Uh, we, can tabulate, uh, we can tabulate them here. Whereby we are going to have member. We have the member. And we have the force on that member. So that is the force in kilo newtons. The force in kilo newtons. Good. So the members that we were asked to determine the values of their forces, the first one was member GC. Member GC. And we have found that the force on member GC or CG is 4.185 kilonewtons. Now, uh, since this force is positive, it is going to be a tensile force tensile force. So the force on member CG is a tensile force. Uh, then the force on member BC, the force on member BC, the same as uh, force on CB, that is 5.832, 5.832 kilonewtons, which is a compressive force. So you can write here T, that is a tensile force, this is C, a compressive force. The next one is uh, the force on member CD. And the force on member CD, we had found it uh, earlier, that was 4.416. So 4.416 kilonewtons, which was a compressive force as well. And finally, the force on member FE. The force on member FE, it is this, FEF. That is 3.824, 3.824 kilonewtons, and it is a tensile force. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, engineers, that is how we uh, determine the forces on various members of this simple truss given here using the method of sections. Uh, we appreciate so much for watching our video and please. If you are here to subscribe, remember to do so. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new uh, video, you will be the, the very first person to be notified. So let's meet in yet another lesson. Thank you.